Hey, Brian Miller here, and welcome to Audio for Content Creators, where we help you sound better and level up for all your content creation needs. This video is a very straightforward comparison, a blind audio comparison between two of the most iconic microphones in all of history, all of history, the Shure SM58 and the Shure SM57. Throughout this video, I'm going to be switching back and forth between the SM58 and the SM57. You'll see that indicated by an A or a B in the lower left portion of the screen. I'm not going to tell you until the very, very end of the video which one was which. So as you listen to me ramble on a little bit about these different microphones, what what's different about them, what's the same about them, different use cases, I want you to be thinking about which one you like better and write that down. I'll give you a chance at the end to find out which is which, and then you can decide for yourself if you'd like to pick one of these up. It's worth noting that this is a review of these microphones for spoken word, not for music. If you'd like to see a video comparing the microphones for musical applications, just let me know in the comments, and I'm, I'm sure we can make that happen. And of course, it needs to be said, both of these microphones are being recorded directly into my Tascam 208i audio interface. No other processing is being applied. The way I have these microphones positioned is they are both about, let's see, about two inches away from my mouth. I'm speaking as best as I can straight through the center so that hopefully I'm not getting any plosives. The P's and B's that uh, that come out, that shoot out as air, uh, air that shoots straight out of your mouth and pops microphones. Uh, but that, of course, brings us to the first major difference. The SM58 has an integrated pop filter. This metal grill right here is removable. As you can see, this is a metal pop filter because this microphone, the SM58, is designed to be used as a stage vocal mic. That's what it was really made for. It's made to be handheld on stage by a singer. And so this metal grill helps reduce plosives when you are that close to it and singing aggressively directly into the microphone. Now I'm speaking very close to the SM58 so you can hear the proximity effect as the low end of my voice gets much, much more pronounced and there's a chance of me popping some of my P's and T's. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. And just for a quick direct comparison, you're listening now to the SM58 without the pop filter and now you're listening to the SM58 with the pop filter. And now I'm speaking very close to the SM57 so you can hear the proximity effect on this thing and hear how it colors my voice by getting much, much darker and deeper. And now you can hear if it pops badly. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. One of the things you'll hear a lot when it comes to comparing these two mics is, hey, aren't those exactly the same microphone and you're just using a pop filter on one and not on the other? Almost. They are not exactly the same microphone. Their frequency responses are slightly different. I'll put those on the screen right now. So even though they should sound almost identical, they are not precisely the same mic. I mentioned earlier that the SM58 is typically a stage vocal microphone, whereas the SM57 is often used for instruments. Uh, you can place it right up against the grill of a, uh, of a guitar cabinet, which is why not having a pop filter and having a flat front is so useful here. But you can also use it on acoustic guitar, on drum kits, on snare drums, on hi-hats, on toms. This SM57 is often considered the most versatile microphone in the entire music industry for that reason. And it is used frequently for spoken word applications. Here's what it sounds like when I speak into the SM58 from directly on the capsule. Here's what it sounds like from about two inches off the capsule. And here's what it sounds like from about six inches off the capsule. Here's what the SM57 sounds like from directly up on the capsule. Here's what it sounds like from about two inches off the capsule. And here's what it sounds like from about six inches off the capsule. And now just for the sake of comparison, we're listening to the SM58 with its built-in pop filter. And now we're listening to the SM57 with a foam windscreen placed on the outside. Similarly, here's the SM58 with the pop filter and an additional pop filter. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. And here's the SM57 as it is with a pop filter on the outside. 
Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. And now I'd like to switch around the two microphones in their positions because just by chance, the SM58 is angled completely off axis to the computer fan. My computer's over here. The fan is kicking in because it's a 2015 machine that is starting to be pushed to its limits with the amount of recording that I do. So I'm going to switch the positions of these so we can hear if there's any difference between the off axis rejection of that fan noise. First, a little bit of silence. So now you should be able to tell if there's any particular difference in the off-axis rejection with that fan noise. It should be almost inaudible. I probably had to boost that way up just for you to hear it because these are both dynamic microphones that have fantastic off-axis rejection, which is great for working in a home studio if you're not in a well-treated room like I am, if you're in a normal home studio, office, bedroom, living room, and you've got some reflections, some echo, some reverb going on, microphones like this will do a great job. So at this point in the video, you have been able to hear both of these microphones through a variety of different situations, and you've also been able to hear a blind audio comparison between A and B. At no point during those A, B comparisons that I tell you which one was which, so by now, you should have written down which one you liked best. If you haven't, Make sure you go back and watch a little bit, listen very carefully, put your headphones on or at least really good earbuds, but if you can, some over-ear headphones so you can really hear the difference because I'm about to tell you whether A or B, which one was which. Are you ready for the answer? It's coming in three, two, one. A was the SM57 and B was the SM58. Did that surprise you? Which one did you like better? Let it... Ow, I smashed my elbow on the desk. Which one did you like better? Let us know in the comments down below. Which one are you thinking about using for your, uh, for your purposes? What kind of content do you create? Why are you thinking about these microphones? Would you like me to do a comparison for music, for vocals, uh, for sung vocals, for, for acoustic guitar, for electric guitar, different things like that? Let me know if that's something you'd like to see. Having said that, I hope this video was helpful. Hit that like button if it was. Subscribe if you haven't already. I don't know what that dance was. I just finished editing this video, and originally I realized that I did not include my own thoughts or my own opinion, and y'all sometimes blast me for not including my own opinion, and I, I'm really torn on this because I feel like these blind audio comparisons are valuable because I don't color them with my thoughts or my opinion, but I also totally get why some of you are like, well, it'd be really helpful for me to know the opinion of somebody who actually knows what they're doing when it comes to audio, knows what they're listening for. So I get that as well. Here are my quick thoughts on the difference between the SM58 and the SM57 when it comes to spoken word, uh, doing voiceover or narration, doing, um, uh, doing a podcast, or doing talking head videos like this for YouTube. I think that your best bet for standard narration voiceover and talking head is the SM57. I find the SM57 is a little bit less nasally. I find it's a little bit smoother and it has just a little bit more clarity. Whereas I find the SM58 is a little bit darker, a little bit muddier, dare I say. And I think the difference there gets accentuated the closer you get to them. It, once you back off three or four inches, you're going to need to crank the gain because both of these mics require quite a lot of gain. I think I think I was set, yeah, my gain setting on this Tascam 208i for each of these mics was about four o'clock. So it was probably at like 80 to 90% of the total gain uh, for, uh, for each channel. So they need a lot of gains. And if you back off three or four inches, you're going to need a lot of gain for these mics. But once you back off three or four inches, I think the major difference between uh, the frequency differences, the tonal differences disappear a little bit. The big difference with the SM58 is is that it's got this, you know, this pop filter, this metallic pop filter, which you probably noticed when I removed it, the microphone opened up a little bit. It gets a little bit less dark, a little bit less muddy, but of course then you lose the pop filter. So I would say 
if you're doing standard talking head like this or narration or voiceover work, the SM57 with a pop filter in front of it will do you worlds of good. I really enjoy uh, the tone of this microphone. Plus, it's super versatile for other types of recording, especially if you're a musician. But if you're doing a podcast with other people, if you're in the real world, which I know in the middle of 2020 seems ridiculous to say, but times will change and this video will hopefully still be relevant five years from now when we're not in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, by the way, if you're watching this in the future, how is life when it's not a pandemic? The SM58 will do you worlds of good if you're doing podcasting where you're going to have somebody else speaking into it who maybe isn't as comfortable with microphones, doesn't know how to use them as well as you do, because that means that they can just talk straight into it and the pop filter built in will help avoid some of those plosives. And then if you also put, if you also put a foam windscreen on top of that, then you can really have people write up on the thing, whether they're holding it themselves or whether you've got it on a stand that they can get right up close to. I've recorded tons of in-person podcasts using an SM58, uh, actually paired with an SM48, which is the baby brother of this particular mic. Looks just like it, slightly different frequency response, a little bit harsher, not quite as smooth, but I'll stick the SM58 on my guest and, and I'll shove a pop filter on it. And sometimes I'll also put one of these. So I'll have them speaking into this, which means they can get right up close to that thing and we can get a really, really terrific sound. We can avoid all of the coloration of the room. We can avoid reflections and echo and all that stuff. And I'm not going to have them pop the microphone. So for that particular situation, I think you'd be really well served with an SM58 for studio shots that it's just you and you know how to use a mic. I would use an SM57 with a pop filter in front of it, maybe have it slightly, uh, slightly at a 45 degree angle, kind of off the corner of your mouth like this. I think you'll really enjoy the SM57. Of course, Either way you go, these are classic, incredible microphones. They're a hundred bucks each. You'd be really happy with either of these. They will last you literally a lifetime. You can't go wrong. Links in the description to both of these mics and some of the other things like this pop filter and these foam windscreens and stuff like that. Anyway, now this video is over. Thanks so much for sticking with me. Come back anytime to sound better and level up, and we'll see you soon. I've been doing this at the end of videos lately. What is that? It's like a tick. Bye.